you grade 10 mind setters it is a wednesday afternoon four o'clock life sciences learners you should know what that means by now we're doing life sciences and today i'm with cheryl <laughs> how are you doing cheryl? i'm well and you Lenny. i'm good thank you so tell us what are we doing today good afternoon everybody it looks like it's me and my um little tree trunk over here we are going to look at how a tree grows in width so we're going to be looking at secondary thickening today all right mindsetters you heard it for yourself i am loony by the way if you don't know who i am by now don't forget to hit us up on twitter at learn extra on facebook at facebook.com forward slash learn extra you guys can also download all your show notes the schedules and the videos on learn extra.co.za forward slash live and with all that said i'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and cheryl i'll take it straight back <laughs> to you thank you loony um I have got a, as you can see in front of me, I've got a, a, a small little tree um, branch over here that uh, one of our producers got for me this afternoon. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how um, diacotyledonous plants can increase in width. Right? We're going to call it secondary thickening or secondary growth. I'm just going to just show you the bit of the features on the stem first, and then after that we're going to go to the board and, and do a bit of the theory behind it. Okay, if we have a look at our stem, what we're going to notice most of all, and I just want to get around over here, is that our stem has got characteristic rings. And that's what we're going to look at when we see if a plant grows. We can actually tell how old, I won't say a plant, but a tree, needs to be a diacotyledonous tree. We actually can tell how old it is by counting the rings. But it's Usually those pictures that you see when they have counted, all right, that they, it all depends on how you cut it, and again, if you polish it up, etc., then you're going to see the rings much clearly. But I want you to notice this is tree bark, all right? This is the tree, and if you look carefully on it, and when next time you go past a tree, I want you to have a look, you're going to see all these little bumps on it, okay? They, they arise from the surface, if I can turn it around there, Okay, you get all these little bumps, and those are going to be lenticels, all right? Because you need to remember, unlike our herbaceous um, stems, the ones that are quite green and quite flexible, you need to be able to still breathe, all right? This tree trunk still needs to get oxygen, and it still needs to get the nutrients into it. So those little lenticels are going to be the breathing pores, okay? You will see last week when we did the stem, here are our lateral branches. There we go, our leaves. It's now autumn as well. Our leaves are starting to die. And here, all of these little leaf scars on it. But the most important thing that I want you to have a look at, if we go to the center again, all right, is here you can see quite clearly that there's a dark region and there's a light region. And if you can look carefully right around the outside okay there that is if you can see if you can next time if you see a little stem that's all right fall into the ground next time instead of just kicking it or picking it up and throwing it away have a look at it and you'll see over there that's going to be the cork all right so most importantly are the circles that are going to be formed in the stem and if we look at this stem and we look at the one over here all right this is going to give me muscles today Right, you can see that this one is thicker than that one. All right, so what is ultimately going to happen, this one can also grow much thicker. We're now going to go to the board, and we're going to start with our theory behind this secondary thickening. All right, so as I said to you, we're going to be looking at secondary thickening or secondary growth in a plant. Some of the things we're going to look at today, all right, if you tuned in last week, you would have um, seen us revise. Well, we didn't revise. We did the dicot stem and we did the dicotyledonous root. And very important for tonight then is that basic knowledge of the dicotyledonous stem because it's the dicot stem that is going to grow wider. Okay? We're going to look at those annual rings. How do we get those rings in the trees? How can we count it? All right, and then the last thing we're going to look at is, remember I said to you, you need to look at that, that there was a dark piece, there was a light piece. Those all happen at different times of the year. And then, again, always look at the related terminology. Remember when I spoke, I spoke about annual rings. I spoke about lenticels. I spoke <coughs> about cork. 
So all of those things, remember, are part of the words that we use to describe it. Remember, as I always say to you, you always need to speak biologically. All right? You can't talk about those holes in the stem. They're not that. There's got a specific name for it. Okay, so let's start. First thing we're going to do, quickly look at the dicot stem. Again, as we did last week. All right, but before we do that, I just want to clarify two things for you. When we talk about secondary growth, that means it widens. Not all plants are able to widen. Okay, so for example, our monocotyledonous plants, they are unable to undergo secondary thickening. And some dicotyledonous plants don't as well. All right, but all one thing that all plants have in common is that they grow upwards and they grow downwards. So if we have to look, if you look at the words there, right, our terminology are the meristems. And what that means is, okay, first thing, primary growth. Let me get the pen and a color. All right, I'm going to use the pink over here. At the top of a stem, you have the apical meristem. Okay, apical means at the top of or at the point. If you see, I've put a diagram over here of what it looks like in cellular, and these are all the meristematic cells over there. Remember, when we use the word meristematic, we are implying that the cells can divide. So if the stem, the cells divide at the top of the stem, the plant is going to grow longer, all right? Because where does the plant want to grow? Up to the light, because it wants to be able to photosynthesize. It obviously also needs to grow downwards. When it grows downwards, when we looked at the root last week, one of the regions that we looked at was the region of meristem, the meristematic region. That was an area where the cells divide by mitosis. And in dividing by mitosis, what happens? The root goes downwards. Okay? So very much like you when you were born, all right, and each year you get taller and taller. That would be your primary growth. Okay? Secondary growth is unfortunately when you get to my age, what you tend to do is you tend to get a bit wider. All right. So secondary growth is wider. But let's have a look quickly at the diacotyledonous stem structure because the structure enables it to widen. Let's quickly go over it once again. All right. Okay. The most important thing that I said to you last week, all right, you need to look. I'm going to show you the picture again just now. Let's go over the terminology. We have an outer epidermis, okay? Then we have, under the epidermis, we usually have calenchyma, calenchyma. Remember, the calenchyma cells are thickened at the corners. They help support the cells, <laughs> right? They help support the plant. And the reason I'm telling you this is that the calenchyma can change, Right? If the mer meristematic tissue in the calenchyma changes, that's going to become our cork. So it actually becomes something different later on. Okay? Then we have these very important little structures. And those are our vascular bundles. And remember, what is a vascular bundle? A vascular bundle has vascular tissue. Vascular tissue transports. And our transport tissues are my xylem and my flow. Now, inside that vascular bundle, we're going to look at it clearer just now, there's a very secret little part, all right, between the xylem and the flow, right, so they are separated uh, by a layer of cells that are meristematic. Again, they are able to divide by mitosis. And it's these cells that are going to divide and make more xylem and more phloem so that the stem can then increase in width. All right. So if we were to go to a picture, and I want you to look carefully here. I asked you to pay attention to the different rings when we were looking at the tree. I said to you, secondary thickening is going to ingro uh, involve growing wider. And we're going to see that growth by a marked ring pattern. Now, 
This is my stem of a dicot. This over here is the stem of my monocot. So though we didn't do the monocot last week, right, and you don't necessarily need to do it, look at why. I put the question here. So why can diacots, right, widen and not monocots? And if you just look at the picture, remember I said to you, we are going to look at rings. We are going to look at rings. Okay, there I have a ring. If I get to my monocot, I'm looking, what do I see? Okay, I see a ring on the outside maybe, but what do I need? I need this ring on the inside over here. Where's my ring on the inside? There isn't one. So for me to make a ring, I need to have established at least a little bit of a beginning pattern. And we don't have that yet. Now, the secret lies in our vascular bundles. They are our secret weapon. Have a look here. Okay? The vascular bundles, they, their structure, right, their structure is the, the, the force behind the secondary thickening. I want you to have a look at these two over here. You'll see I've even put crosses and a tick on it. Okay. First thing, in order to be able to divide, if we have a look at the dicot over here, and you'll see, there we go. You need cambium. If I look over here at my monocot, all right, there I see the phloem, there I see the, vi the, the xylem, and I look for it and question mark, there's no cambium. So there's no cambium present in my vascular tissue. So secondary thickening is making it wider. It's growing more, right, in especially in width. And I don't have the necessary tissue that is there, all right, to be able to do it. That's the first point. Second point, we talk about a open and closed vascular bundle. If you have a look at my monocot, have you look, look at this pink all around here. The, the vascular tissue is enclosed. It's like, it's like me, somebody putting cement all over me, all right? I, I can't move, I can't do anything. So that's exactly what's happened here. So in my vascular bundle of my stem, that sclerenchyma cap is actually stopping it from growing wider. But if we have a look here, all right, in my dicot, what do I see? I only see there's a cap at the top. That's it. A cap to protect. The rest of it, look around here. Nothing. No sclerenchyma whatsoever. So, yes, I have a protective part on it at the top. So, on the outside, yes, it's protected. But because it's got no restricting tissue, it can divide as much as it wants to. And the last point, all right, what, what shape are they in? All these vascular bundles are in a circle, right? When I come to my monocot, here's my root, all right? They can be anywhere. The vascular bundles have no pattern. But in my diacot, I have a definite round circle. So the structure of the diacotyledonous plant is essential to its function of increasing in width. So if we go over it again, there you'll see... Okay, the v vascular bundles must have cambium. That's why I put it nice and big. All right, they must be open. No sclerenchyma confining in them. And the last one, very important, okay, they must be in a circle. So just looking at the shape and the structure of it, we can see exactly what we are going to do. All right, so let's start. Okay. First thing, what is secondary thickening? It's when the plant has the ability to increase in width. Okay, Remember, primary growth, increase in height, going up and going down. Secondary thickening, going wider. Right. So again, remember, you must remember your terminology. Now, if you have a look again at diacotyledonous plants, especially when we're looking at trees, Trees are big, all right? They are there for, they can be there for hundreds and hundreds of years. So they have the time in which they are going to grow wider. If you look at a monocot plant, let's have a look at our mealy, all right? The common monocot that we can use. If we look at our mealy, 
Our um, millie is an annual plant. All right, what does it do? It grows one season, and then what does the farmer do? Whoever wants it comes and takes it out again. So it actually doesn't last long enough for it to actually need, all right, to, s to undergo secondary thickening. And if you think of our trees, trees are heavy, they are big. The xylem and the phloem, especially the xylem, remember the xylem was hollow. The hollowness of the xylem and the hardness of it is going to make sure that we have a good supporting tissue. Okay, all right. So if we look here, I want to show you something here. Okay, this is the next important term that I need you to understand. I want you to have a look at this diagram over here. It's very simple to the ones that, all right, we showed just now. I'm going to draw a vascular bundle over here. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much, all right, about the, I'm not going to worry too much about the cap. I'm worried, not worried, I'm going to want to concentrate on the phloem and the xylem, all right, and the cambium. Now, here comes the terminology again, all right? The cambium that is in between the two over here, all right, is called the interfascicular cambium, all right? So what we're going to find over here, we have the cambium, all right, which is called fascicular, fascicular cambium, all right? It means it's cambium in the, in the, within the vascular bundle, vesicular vascular bundle. Now, if you notice, each of these ones, let me go here, much easier, each of these ones are separate. Although they are arranged in a bit of a ring, right, we don't see a continuous ring. Now, what happens is, in between, here, yeah, I'm going to use a different color pen, right, in between these areas over here, there are little parenchyma cells. Okay, because remember, parenchyma, my packing. And what happens is those parenchyma cells actually change, right? They now become meristematic. So now they join up with their friends, their buddies, in the vascular bundle. So if I were to join it, okay, here I had my fascicular, here I had vesicular. Now I'm joining so what have I got if I have to join all of those? I now have my ring. Have a look at this diagram. All right, so it's showing you. There the vascular bundles were by themselves. And now, once that parenchyma becomes meristematic, all right, we call it, there's the word, interfascicular. Means in between the bundles. All right. That is your interfascicular cambium. So you had cambium that was by itself, and now you've formed it, so you have formed a whole ring. And that is very important. Are we having a break, I think? Do okay. I have a quick no, break? I hear whispering in my ear. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take a very short break, but do remember, after the break, I'll ask Cheryl the questions during the break. Then after the break, we'll come back and we'll discuss them. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you guys are ready and you're refreshed. You got some water and some juice. We got a few questions during the break. So up here we asked, why do you say it's a theory of secondary thickening? Okay, we don't say it's a theory, right? A theory sometimes means that it hasn't been proved yet, right? Secondary thickening is a process. It's a definite process that occurs in plants. Remember what I said to you? You grew taller before you're going to grow wider. So first of all, primary growth is to grow tall, secondary thickening or secondary growth is to grow wide. Okay, right. I hope you got your answer up here and a shout out to you and Calvin for watching and thank you so much for helping out everyone else on the page. So good, 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 great stuff guys. Back to you Cheryl. <laughs> thank you Looney. One of the questions I did uh, happen to look at on the computer was a question on transpiration. And next week, we're going to be looking at transpiration. So if you need any of those kind of questions, please tune in next week. Let's carry on with our secondary thickening. 
uh, just to recap quickly, remember what I said to you? We need to have a ring, all right? This ring of cambium so that we can make our characteristic rings. And what happened in between each of the vascular bundles? Parenchyma changed, it became meristematic, and it joined up with its friends on the side to now form this continuous ring of cambium. All right? In the, it's called fascicular cambium in the bundle, into a fascicular cambium, all right, and that makes together the whole vascular cambium within the stem. Now let's have a look at how we're going to, all right, there's lots of writing here. Okay, I'm going to go through it with you step by step. It's quite a, it's quite a, diff what's a difficult process to understand, right? But I'm going to try and draw pictures with you as we go. Okay. First of all, now we're going to look at, all right, terminology. And now there's going to be two, two more words. Secondary xylem and secondary frum. I want to draw a little diagram over here. Okay. Here we have a vascular bundle. There was my phloem. There was my xylem. Okay. That was the first ones there. They were the first ones there. Secondary thickening doesn't happen as soon as the plant all right, starts to develop. It can take a few years before the plant needs to be able all right, to divide by secondary thickening. So initially, those, the xylem, because the plant needs to get the water up and the flow needs to get the food down, all right? so initially we're going to have the primary. Primary, again, means the first ones. Secondary, all right, means the second ones. So now this is what's going to happen. Okay? Now we've got this. We have got our cambium. All right? Now what's going to happen is this cambium makes more phloem and it makes more xylem. But because it is now in a ring, all right, it is in a ring formation and not in a little bundle, it's going to look something like this, okay? So there's the first one. There's my primary flow. Then I make new flow, but I make it in a circle, all right? And it came second after my primary. So that's my secondary I'm just going to call it SP for now, okay? Then what's in the bundle over here? The cambium, all right? Cambium is in the middle because it made more flow. And what shape is it in? It's in this ring shape, the circles, all right? Remember that. Then over here, what's next to it? The xylem. But what shape is it in? Yes, it's a ring again. So my xylem is in a ring shape. So here was my primary flow. There's my secondary. It's a ring. My cambium is now in a ring. My xylem, this is the new xylem that I make. I want the new next to me. And the new one will then be secondary xylem. And what do we have just sticking out the bottom there? The very first one, the primary xylem. So what's going to start to happen is that each time you make a ring, you're going to push that primary flow outside, all right, because it's one on the outside, and you're going to push the primary xylem inside. So what you're going to have is you're going to separate them. Here's going to be the primary flow. Here's going to be the primary xylem. And in between them, all right, are going to be these new layers, right? The, pr the secondary phloem and the secondary xylem. Now, they're not going to look like the primary, as I said to you, because they are going to be laid down in a ring formation. Because as soon as the cambium joined hands, all right, to make that ring, when you are, go what, what shape are you going to make? If you are a ring structure, all right, what are you going to lay down the xylem and phloem? Ring, ring. So you're going to have all of these ring structures. Okay. So eventually they're going to be f wide, f um, far apart. If we have a look here, I want to show you this picture. 
maybe you can understand a bit better. Okay, let's look at the, the yellow over here. If we look at the yellow, all right, what is this? This was my phloem. Okay, can you see? There's my phloem, there's the bump, that's my phloem. Each one of those bumps was my primary phloem. Okay, and then on the inside here, this was once upon a time my little primary xylem. So they're still the bumps and they're the bumps. But what do we have in between? We have the rings. Okay, so what happened? Look at my light blue here, always in the middle. I'm going to use another color so you can see it a bit better. I'm going to use pink. There, look here. That's my cambium. It's not going to get any wider. All right, but what has it made? Look at there. It's made new phloem. Look at my phloem layer. All right, it's getting bigger. Okay, then look here. Look at this, all the red. All right, all the red, that is my new xylem. Look at the red here. That's a new xylem. All right, now if you look closely, what you're going to see is there's a ring. And there's another ring. All right. So each time we lay down, and we're going to look now when we look at annual rings, all right? What happens is the plant is going to go through a growth season, all right, every single year. The same as when you, were, you also grew, when you were born, you also went through your growth spurts, all right? The plant is going to go through. When it widens, it's going to do exactly the same thing. So in the end, look what we have. The xylem is here and the phloem is there. So we have the stretching, all right? So the primary xylem and the primary phloem, they are parted. They are forever parted, all right? They start to move far away from each other. The phloem gets pushed outwards, and the xylem gets pushed inwards, the primary, all right? They were the firsts. Because they weren't in a circle, that's why they always appear like they will always do. The rest, every single time I make new xylem and I make new phloem, I lay it down in a circular formation or a ring, what we're going to call an annual ring. Okay, so let's have a look at our annual rings. I'm sure you have all, right, if you have seen a piece of wood or a, a stem or a piece of a branch that we've cut down, right, these are what we call the annual rings. Again, terminology, right? We look just now, secondary xylem, secondary flow, excuse me, all right? And now what we're going to see, if I have a look over here, all right, is you're going to see this line, all right? Let me choose this one. There's a dark line, there's a dark line, all right? I'm sure you can see all the dark lines, okay? In between them, over there, I'm going to use, let me use a different color. In between them, that's not space. All right? They're all exactly the same thing. They are all xylem. Okay? So there's a dark line, there's a line. So if I were to draw it over here, there would be circles like that. This dark line and the tissue in between it that forms one annual ring. Here's a dark line, and there's the dark line, and it's tissue in between it, and that's going to form the second ring. Okay, now, the reason that one part is quite wide and the other part is very narrow is dependent on the season in which they grow in, okay? This light portion over here, let me show you over there. Okay. All right, let's have a look over here. We can see it microscopically. There's my dark portion, and there's my light portion. Okay. There's my dark portion, it's thin. There's my light portion. Okay. This light portion is called my spring wood. All right, spring wood. Not as in spring jump, but spring as in it occurs in spring. 
Now, the conditions of spring, all right, for a plant are really, really cool, okay? Literally cool, but also very, very important for the plant. And the reason is there's lots of food, there's lots of water, the sun starts shining a little bit brighter. We're now facing, all right, the sun. Water maybe starts to rain. So all the conditions that a plant needs are very favorable. So because the conditions are very favorable, the plant, the cambium, lays down more xylem. So instead of all of these are big xylem vessels. They're large and they thin. All right? The more favorable the conditions for growth, the wider my ring will be. Okay? That's always, and you can tell from a tree trunk, you'll see just now, a tree trunk can tell a story. Right? It can tell you about the weather. It can tell you about the climate. The next one, the darker wood, this, is wood, this, all right? It's not a boundary line. It forms one. But what happens is, is that this grows during the autumn. It's called the autumn wood. What do we start seeing now? You guys have started to feel it. What happens in the autumn? It starts to get colder. There might not be as much water available. The rainy season has maybe stopped. All right? Sunlight, the light intensity is not as much as there is in the spring. So the conditions are not as favorable. Okay? So when the conditions are not as favorable, very few xylem tissues, all right, the xylem vessels are made, and those that are made are thinner and they are thicker. So instead of my nice um, large ones over here, all right, what would be in there are small, little, and they're thicker. They're thicker. Now, because they're thicker, all right, what do they do? They m appear as a dark band. So this is, or this is spring, and that is autumn. So what is that? One year. All right, isn't that one year? Because in one year, we're going to have spring, and we're going to have autumn. And then the plant will rest, and then what will happen here? We will get spring, then we get autumn. Then again, the next year, we will get spring, we will get autumn, we will get spring. So the more favorable the conditions, the wider it will be. So if you were to look at a tree trunk, and they were very, very close together, all right, very, very close, even these spring ones, if they were very close, what is it telling you? That the climate was quite harsh. That it might have been very dry. There might not have been a lot of water available. You might have had a drought. right? So if there's not water available, enough for the plant to grow, it's not going to lay down as much xylem. In the autumn growth, what happens if it snows? Right? What about trees that live in place where there is snow, where there's a lot of frost, where it's really, really cold? What's going to happen? They're going to lay down very, very little flow. So your rings are going to be very close together. So the closer your rings are together, the harsher the climate, the harsher the environment. The further away your rings are from each other, all right, that means that you're going to have quite a favorable. All right, if we have a look over here. So these are nice and long, nice favorable. Spring, lots of favorable conditions. Autumn, we start getting cold. Remember what happens to some plants in the autumn. What happens to their leaves? All right? They put a little cork layer in the leaf so nothing can get through. So that leaf actually turns brown and falls to the floor. It's an energy saver. It's saving up for when the conditions are not so good. All right. Let's go on. Then we looked at the, I uh, showed you th the autumn wood. Okay. We're going for a break. Okay, let's take a quick break. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take a very short break again, but do remember to stay tuned because we're going over all these things, the annual rings and the what what. I never did life sciences, so please don't judge me. <laughs> so we'll be back right after this, guys. Welcome back, guys, from that short break. 
We are doing grade 10 life sciences if you've just joined us. I am Looney and with me is Cheryl. So Cheryl, we have a question here from Apiwe. He's asking what is found in the pit? The pit on Piwe, all right, is the parenchyma cells. Remember when, I'm going to draw it for you quickly, all right? Remember when we drew our circle over here, then we had our vascular bundles, all right? Over here, all of this inside here is the pith. And if you have a look at this black on the wood over there, that is the pith still. So it's where the xylem, all right, the inside of the xylem, the pith is always the middle. Another word you can use is medulla. And I know another question you asked is, the what's the hypodermis? The hypodermis is underneath the epidermis, all right? So mm -hmm. here's my epidermis. What do I have underneath it? I have my calenchyma and I have my parenchyma. That is going to make up your hypodermis for you. I hope that answered his question. Yes, Afiwe, thank you so much for asking your questions. You've been a great sport on the page. Gold star to you. So Cheryl, take <laughs> it away. All right, just to explain to you once again, I've tried to put in a few diagrams just to show. If you have a look here, each individual ring, as I say to you, form is a, is a sign of one growing season. So if we were to count each ring, there we go, it's 18 years, then 23. Now if you have a look here, 69. So in the beginning over here, you will actually notice that the rings are quite close together, right? And in being quite close together, that actually shows you that the conditions there were quite, were not as favorable as the conditions were for the 23 and the 18 years. Okay. Right, going on to our next thing, right, our annual rings, we have spoken about it. Now I want to show you, remember I said to you, you must look at those little yellow specks on the, all right, on the tree. That is, those are the lenticels. Now, the tree, if it's covered in bark, all right, what's going to happen is that there's, they can't have stomata, okay? Because what actually happens is the cork, all right, takes over the, the calenchyma actually changes again. Funny enough, the calenchyma, everything seems to change. And remember next year, you can probably do it in grade 12, that this change is all hormone um, um, organized. The, the hormones, plants, believe it or not, have hormones, and that triggers growth, the same as with us. So if you have a look at this diagram over here at the bottom, okay, what happens, what the lenticel is, is here's the calenchyma cells. These were all calenchyma cells, all right? And the calenchyma changes and becomes meristematic. And it lays down these cork cells. Now, cork is dead, all right? The cork cells are dead. Now, if the cork cells are dead, the poor epidermis can't get any nutrients. So now what's going to happen? The epidermis is going to die and it flakes off. And you're going to see very often on the bark, you guys have gone to a tree and you can pull the bark off. That's the epidermis, all right? But what we do sometimes find is that these cork cells are not always as tightly packed as they should be. Sometimes there's a little bit of a space in between. And when there's a little bit of a space, look what happens. They tear apart, all right, and there is almost like a hole. And that hole is the lenticel in the tree over here, all right, these little, these little openings, all right, that you can see. And if it's... If it's an opening, what can happen? Gases can move out, all right? And there we go. Gases can move in, gases can move out, and we can actually get nourishment to the cell. So stomata on the leaf, and in green stems, you will sometimes see that there's stomata, all right? But on the, but on the bark, all right, you've all seen the bark. You're not gonna, going to be able to see it there. Okay, now we're going to go on to the important terms. As I said to you, when I spoke, annular rings, secondary thickening, all right? Um, secondary xylem, secondary phloem, fascicular cambium, all right? Interfascicular cambium, autumn wood, spring wood, all right? Um, also, we have apical meristems at the top of my stem and at the bottom of my stem, all right? Okay. So now, guys, you need to now have sort of realized that the xylem, all right, making up each of those rings, the xylem is what you call the wood of a tree, all right? So the xylem, the laying down of xylem, that's the wood because those xylem vessels are your layers. 
So each layer makes up the internal structure, so that is wood, all right, which lots of us use for maybe decorative purposes, making furniture, etc., or for the more <laughs> primal needs of making a fire, burning, keeping warm, cooking food. Okay, now we're going to start to answer some questions on secondary thickening, all right? And I've started off with an easyish one, and then I'm going to go on to one where there's not so much studying involved, but a lot more of the, the skills, the graphs. Okay, looking at the diagram, <coughs> sorry, let's see. First of all, you should notice that there's a ring, okay? So the first thing I look at, I see it's a diacotyledonous stem. Why? My vascular bundles are open, but most importantly, I can see that my vascular bundles, <coughs> sorry, are arranged in a ring. Now, what is also what I've noticed, okay, is that the cambium has now joined. So my first thing, before I even look at this diagram over here, all right, what am I looking at? I know that because that ring is present, my stem is now ready to undergo secondary thickening, which answers question number A. Which process, and that's the process, remember I said it's not a theory, all right? The process, and that is going to be secondary thickening, all right? Or you can say secondary growth. They're the same thing. I'm just so used to saying secondary thickening. Now, the next one, simple study. Label one through to eight. Okay, so which is num number one is my inter fascicular cambium. All right, because where's it pointing to? If I sh let me just quickly rub out for you quickly. All right, if I just take that little area away so that you can see. Okay, what have we got over there? It's not the vascular bundle. It's the interfascicular. All right, now let's go over here to number two. What do you think number two would be? Number two is the outside. What is that? Epidermis. What's underneath my epidermis? All right, number three. My cortex, isn't that all my parenchyma? So this is my outer layer, all right? That is my epidermis. Then my next layer over here inside, the black is the packing. That's the cortex, all right? Where does number four go? Number four is pointing to the middle one. That is going to be my cambium, sorry. Let me just make an arrow there and let me just rub out quickly for you. All right, oh, my writing is much too big for this space. I've allowed myself. Okay, so that's going to be my cambium. All right, number four. Now number five. It's a bump. It's in the middle. It stayed the same. You cannot now use, now be very careful. It's important what word you use here. You cannot use xylem. You need to be specific. It is going to be my primary xylem and if I look at number six all right it's the original the very first it is going to be my primary flow okay which now because now if you notice when you go to number eight and number seven if you've labeled xylem and phloem now all of a sudden you're going to label xylem and phloem again all right but they are two, di two different labels so, the outside one, which one is on the outside always? Phloem. But it can't just be phloem. It was the one that came second. So, it is my secondary phloem. Always on the inside is my xylem. But it wasn't the first. My little bumpies were first, all right? So, what is it? It is my secondary xylem. Okay. Okay. So when you label the, the, um, the structure of a, a stem that's undergoing secondary thickening, please, it's on the outside, all right, primary phloem, secondary phloem. On the inside, primary xylem and secondary xylem. Okay, now the next question. Identi okay, describe 
by using the process mentioned in question B, all right, okay, by using the label numbers and the names, all right. Should actually have been, let's put that, the A. There we go, secondary thickening. Now they ask you to describe. When you describe, you actually have to write a sentence, a full sentence, all right? So what did we say is happening, all right, in secondary thickening? What happens? You need to start off with, okay, what happens to those parenchyma cells? They change, all right? They become meristematic. What do they do? They join with the fascicular cambium, all right? And what does it become? Interfascicular <coughs> cambium. Okay, you see. Now I'm talking in Greek, yes, maybe I am, but I'm speaking biologically. I'm using words like parenchyma, meristematic, all right? The fascicular cambium becomes the interfascicular cambium. All right. Now it's in a circle. So what does the interfascicular cambium do? All right. It divides and it lays down new xylem on the inside. And what do we call that xylem? Secondary xylem. All right, let me see if I touch here. I think I, no, I'm not going to get any more space. All right, and then what happens? We lays down new phloem. All right, and where's that new phloem? On the outside. Okay, and what do we call that new phloem? We call it secondary phloem. And what has happened to the plant? Very simple, it has grown wider. Right. So if you have a look at all of that, there's just terminology sprouting out from that answer. All right. It's, as I said to you, interfascicular cambium, secondary phloem, secondary xylem, all right, meristematic tissue. So when you talk about it, you do need to be somewhat specific. Okay. The whispering in my ears told me <laughs> that we don't have too much time <laughs> left, but I want you, those of you who um, do get the notes, all right, because we know that we do post notes of the show on. I have put this question on the notes as well. And here it's actually showing you, it wants you, right, to measure from X, okay, and here using your ruler, it asks for the measurement for each annual ring, all right, the radius. So you put your ruler down, and that would be year one. All right. Then you measure from there to there. That would be the second year. Then from there to there, the third year. And you will see you'll go all the way up to 11 years. And each time you're going to have, for example, seven. Now look carefully. All right. It asks you to measure in millimeters. Okay. Seven millimeters. Say this one over here is 25 millimeters. So you're going to have from year one to year 11, and each year you're going to have a millimeter. That is giving you data, all right? That is giving you data. So from one to 11, it's going to give you data. So if I go quickly to the next question, all right, it asks you now to draw a table. These are your skills. You need to be able to, in matric, you are going to, and I think even at the end of the year, grade 10, when you write your papers, you are always going to get a graph or a table. So those are nice, easy marks, right? Okay, draw your table. All right, you put in your year and read your carefully diameter. All right, so year one, diameter is radius times two. So if it was 14, all right, it would now be 28. Year two, and I think we have run out of time, oh, yes, haven't we? Have. Oh, so much to <laughs> say. Guys, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show. 
time flies when you're having fun so until next week same time same place guys don't you forget that we do have a help desk so everyone that i didn't get through the questions just remember to go to help desk at learnextra.co.za and you'll get your answer your questions answered sorry within 48 hours guys so you just have to be patient and your questions will be answered so thank you so much and i'll see you next time